This guy's got a bit of damage on his back. There he goes, and there he goes. Beautiful tiger snake. Just released a tiger snake. It's not a cobra, but it's in the same family group. Unfortunately, I can't afford a ticket to Southeast Asia to see a cobra in person, but I will one day. But for right now, how to draw a cobra the easy way. Starting off drawing sort of like a teardrop on its side. Now this is going to be the head of the cobra. Just like a teardrop. Now I'm going to pop in where the neck's going to be. Or the underbelly and the neck. So one line down there, another one down there. These are like brackets, just curves. We're starting off pretty easy. Now a bit more of a curve here for one side of the hood. Another one there. Let me see, about here. For the other side of the hood. Okay, with the eye of the cobra is going to be here somewhere. First we're going to put like a stroke there and there. That's where the eye is going to be. The other eye, you just see it off the edge there. You can sort of see it. I'm sort of making a little bit almost like a geometric shape at the front there. Two lines coming down from the eye and one across the nose. Around here is probably where the mouth is going to be. I'm putting there. So between the eyes and that upside down V shape I've made, it's almost like a W. But in this W, with the eye closest to us, it's a little bit wider and it's narrower on the other side. Let's have a look at that shape again. So W with a wide bit like that and then a narrow bit like that. That's narrow, that's wider. That's called perspective. And it makes things just look right. Here, a little, like a bracket on its side, that's the little slit that the tongue comes out of. I think it's terribly cute on a snake. You see that little mouth there? Looks like I've put a moustache on him. But it's going to look right after a while. It's not a moustache, I promise you. Now, like an upside down letter U there, that's one of the scales under the eyes. And you can see I'm darkening in the mouth here. And sort of making a shape there. We're going to draw over a lot of these shapes with a marker pen. Stripe across there. And continuing the little feet of those W's down there. So you can see there's a scale right at the front called a frontal scale. And that's where that little funny bit of the mouth where the tongue comes out is. Now just another little scale there. Little geometric shape. Doesn't matter if they're not 100% accurate. It's an organic creature. So you can expect a little bit of variation. We'll do the best we can. Now I'm drawing over those two bits of the W, filling that in, and you can see we're starting to fill in the scales. Also notice that one scale is narrower than the other because we've got a W right. Again, some scales up there. We're going real well. Make that angry look. Heavy brows, so when they slide through the grass, they don't scratch their eye. Because I don't have eyelids, so just have a clear scale there. So I'm going to colour that eye in a little bit. Nice and dark. Some more scales behind the eye here. So I just put a bracket and a few lines there. More lines coming down here. And a few off the back here. Now again, these don't have to be 100% perfect. So if near enough's good enough. Let's work on his under his chin a bit. I think that's a bit narrow, so we're gonna make it a little bit wider, that lower part of the mouth. You can see just under his 
where the tongue comes out, I've made like a little letter Y. Now we're doing these scales here, and these are kind of like rounded triangles. I think I might just go on with the neck here a bit. So here we go. Brackets all the way down. Don't necessarily have to be even. In fact, if they're not that even, possibly even better. Just going to speed this up a bit. We're going to go all the way down with those. You can pause the video at any time if you're doing a follow along. If you're drawing this with me, just pause the video and catch up. Otherwise, the video is going to go forever. Now, out here, what I'm doing here is a few guidelines. And you notice how it goes the other way? These lines kind of define the shape of the snake. If you get those lines right, so it gives you almost a 3D-ish sort of a look, or that feeling, the illusion of 3D. So if you can get a little bit of that in, all the better. Now, just doing some scales here in this. I'm doing them all stretched out. And I'm kind of, very roughly, doing a bit like bricks with lots of space between. See that? They're like bricks. When the uh, cobra hoods out like that, and it does it by stretching some ribs out that are around the neck, stretches it right out, the skin, you, you can see the skin between the scales. And so all the scales all stretch out. And like I say, if you can imagine that you're just sort of doing round bricks with lots of mortar in between, that's kind of what we're after here. Again, doesn't have to be 100% accurate, which is knocking these in here as a guide. We're going to do the same on the other side here. And again, I might speed up the video here, otherwise it's going to go for a really long time. If you are drawing along, you can pause the video. Evening up that neck a little bit. So I made it a bit wider at the top there. If you make a mistake, just draw over it. That's what I do. Now on the outside here, there's some skinny flat scales. These are the ones on the back that you're just kind of seeing the side of them. Just darkening up a little bit there. So now I'm shading in a little bit. This represents the patterns of this cobra. It has like a couple of dots either side, surrounded by rings, and a little bit of a stripe on the belly there. shade in a bit of the belly here. I'm going to go over a lot of this with marker pen. But it's good just to put all the bits I intend to shade in. Just so I know. A little bit more shade down here. I'm going to get a marker pen. I'm going to pop a tongue here. And then it's about time to pick out Pull out a marker pen. I'm using a Copic marker. This one's like a brush nib, which I don't use very often. I may even switch up the marker pens in a minute. But if you got a nice sort of thick marker pen, okay, it depends on how big you've drawn this. If you've drawn it small, you want a small marker pen. I'm going for a nice bold look here. I'm pretty much just going over the lines I've done. Probably rounding them off just a little bit. So I'm fairly happy with it. See, I sort of swish them pretty fast. 
part of the skill of drawing is kind of not giving a damn. You just sort of knock it in there very bravely. Don't be timid when you draw. Just like handling snakes, really. You just can't be timid. No, calm, look. I'm liking the way this bold outline seems to be working. I'm going to speed up the video again. Because it's going for a very long time. As I do the belly scales, you notice that I keep a certain float going. I'm not timid, I just go bash in there. Also doing rounded bits at the side there, just to finish off the scales at the side. They're a bit rounded because when the snake is relaxed, it all sort of fits together like a jigsaw puzzle, the scales that are all stretched out at the moment. They all come in and interlock. Also notice as I'm inking in some of these scales, I'm sort of making them point a little bit at the bottom. They're almost like upside down tip. So I'm speeding up a lot of these scales. Like I say, if you're drawing along, just pause the video, catch up. And if you are drawing the video, and if, and if you are drawing along, good on you. With this coronavirus going around, it's good to stay indoors and draw. Good way to spend your time. Because not only does it relieve boredom, you're also learning a new skill. Or improving your skill. Okay, I've got a finer pen here. And this is what I'm going to use to do the shading. And with the shading, just doing lines like this. Some people cross hatch. I like to just do non cross hatching, just hatching, I suppose. I don't cross it unless I want a really dark bit. Otherwise, I'm just playing around with just putting those lines fairly close together. I think it makes a nice sort of shady tone. Sometimes for darkness, I'll just put those lines closer together. Or I'll span them out a bit if I want it a bit lighter. So you see here I've cross-hatched a little bit where I want it really dark. I'm going to speed up this bit because it's going to take a while. And once again, don't worry if it's not exactly the same as mine. You see, when you ink something, when you're putting the ink on, it's like a signature. And everybody's signature is going to be a little bit different. Here I've decided to go in with some cross hatching to make some really dark bits. So there's going to be hundreds of lines here. You're not going to copy it exactly. Don't stress about that. In fact, you do it the way you do it. What you really want to look for though is which bits I've left white, which bits I've made dark, and which bits are sort of like halfway between. So if you're copying this one, that's what you want to look for. Look for which bits I leave white. And I leave white around the scales just to highlight the scales a bit. So each scale has a bit of tone, it's got a bit of darkness, it's got a little bit of light. And that's how snake scales look. This particular cobra is very dark on the head. And quite a lot of snakes are dark on the head, it helps them heat up fast.
So I'm going to put a lot of shade under the chin there. Which might take a fair bit of cross hatching or hatching. I'll just move my hand away here and if you pause the video, you can catch up. Here where the dark bits are, I've decided to go for a thicker marker pen. Just blocking those in. So it's, if you've got marker pens, it's good to have a, a range of different sizes. More traditionally, I'd use nibs and brushes. Back to the finer marker. You can see I've also shaded in between the scales a bit. Shaded that belly a bit. When I've used the big thick marker, it's very different from the fine line one. So what I try to do now is blend with the finer one. I try to do darker areas that almost mirror the big blotchy bits to help those bits blend in a bit so they don't stand out as much. Here colouring in the skin between the scales. You can see a lot's done in the rendering in the lines I decide to use. And I'm just sort of making this up as I go along. I've just had years of experience of using line work. One of the ways you can improve, if not copying me, is look at some of your favourite comic book artists or book illustrators, uh, whether it's a wildlife book illustration or a children's illustration. Have a look at the sort of lines that they use and try and copy some of those. You can use some of those lines in here as well. Like I say, everyone has their own signature, but think about your signature. At some stage, you had to go to school and learn how to write. After that, you had to learn how to write in running writing. And as your writing got messier, we call that your style. So just like you have a signature, a style, so do artists. If you have a look, you can sort of copy some of their styles. You don't get it exact. Copy different artists, not just the one, and you'll soon find your own style. It's always good not to copy the one artist too much. So if you're copying me here, this is just a starting point. You don't want to draw like me all the time, you want to draw like you. And so you can go out and find the artists that you like, copy some of their lines, and then find another artist you like, copy them. After you've gone through about 10 artists, you have a style like nobody else's. Hope you enjoyed this video. The next time I draw a cobra, I'm probably going to do it in color and a little bit more realistic. See you later. Stay indoors, stay safe, and draw a lot.